Welcome back to my show. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, a bit about the development process, design development process of the Fiat 500. When it appeared on the market it was pretty much a brand savior. The impact was enormous. The design is still what we would call timeless. And we all know that design sells, design matters. So there must be some reason behind it. Fiat in 2006 were in dire straits in the sense that they weren't making very much money and they needed a hit desperately. The problem was coming up with a design that would resonate with enough people to make a huge financial profit for the company. And the best way to do that, obviously, is to take something that is much loved in the history of the brand and try to revive it in such a way that it resonates with the uh, older generation that really knew it, as well as current generations of people today who maybe were never exposed to the original one in the first place. So I want to show you, again, briefly sketching out the 500 as it is known today. I think the secret to bringing an iconic design back to life is hum somehow maintaining that character of the original and using the technology of the future. In other words, making the original in such a way that it's almost impossible uh, to build. If you're able to come up with fresh ideas of this uh, new interpretation of an icon in such a way that it makes the lives difficult for the engineers, you're on the right path. The car is fairly round. I would never call it as round as a Beetle but there was a bit of softness and cuteness to it, like I said, that came from, from these generally softer surfaces. All my lines generally are, 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 are either accelerating or de decelerating. In other words, the lines aren't, aren't very straight at all. There's always a bit of movement to the line, a bit of curvature. That's, that's very typical anyways of, of a lot of Italian design. I wouldn't say so much Lamborghini, but more more in terms of the soft, sensual shapes that we often attribute to, to Italian-esque designs. So as you can see, I'm trying to get this very tight-ish overhang car, tight overhangs with a bit of softness, but not too soft. There's that often strived for balance of, of, of shapes and balance of proportions to get something uh, to have tension in it in the design even though it's a softer design. And that's simply by making sure that your lines are under tension all the time. Tension is good in design because it's uh, the opposite of boring. If you have something that's just too predictable, you know what the line is doing, you know how it's going to finish, and then it's predictable and predictable has always been what I would call boring. You want a little bit of unpredictability. But as you can see, I'm honing in on something that looks uh, uh, much more like a Fiat 500 now than when I first started. <laughs> you obviously, with the times as you move on, the cars are, are, are expected to be safer, expected to, to do everything that you require a car to do well and comfortably. So having said that, I still think that the element of beauty and attractiveness is always going to be important Technology is a tool to improve society, but at the same time, it's it's a job of job and responsibility of designer to to package that technology in an attractive way. So now, what I'm going to do is move to the front of the car and show you why this car I think has been so successful. And we can all relate to the cuteness of of anything in nature, of babies and uh, puppies, everything like that. They have something about them that gives them this immediate I want to hold it, I want to touch it, I want it factor, which is that cuteness factor. If you can translate that in one way or another into a vehicle, it's going to have its natural appeal. We all know that there are cars that look super aggressive, but the cars that are super cute have also their appeal to a lot of uh, uh, clients out there. So the 500 had that. Now, if I start getting into why and how that was done, you'll understand the relationship between young animals or puppies, like I said, or even small children, which is those cute, slightly oversized, round, roundish headlights. Um, this Fiat 500 design never would have worked, I guess, or I think successfully, 
if we'd have gone away from this character of the front end of the car. And then a wide, almost a wide, happy mouth, if that uh, means anything. The mouth is typically where we take the air in for the front radiators. And that was also um, a positive looking mouth. It wasn't upturned or, or downturned. It was just something that sort of made it look like it was it was happy. It wasn't grinning in any sense of, of the word. It didn't look ridiculously happy, but it did contribute to that, that uh, I'm a satisfied, I'm enjoying life look of the Fiat 500. And that was the front end of the Fiat 500. Now I've overlapped the original side view, but I think you can still get a feeling of the character that came with this car here. One of the things that you might be wondering is when I do speak about the emotion of the vehicle, what does that exactly mean? Well, that can easily be translated into what the the uh, innocence factor of the vehicle is. It comes across as being an innocent design, and that is what makes the car so appealing and so, so desirable. When you're designing a car, think of that factor. Think of how to reach the people through not just only uh, a fantastic looking design, but you have to fill it with content, with, with emotive content even. Uh, and I think that is what is the appeal of the Fiat 500. So there you have it. That's how the Fiat 500. That's how the Fiat 500 was designed. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I look forward to the next one.